camera. They sat over and said it right. Today I'm not just heading down the English football pyramid but also the country, making the 178 mile journey to the North Devon town of Biddeford, home of the football club Biddeford AFC. They currently play their football in the Southern League Division 1 South, the 8th tier of the pyramid, 4 leagues from League 2. In a truly special and exclusive episode of the interview, I'm going to be chatting to directors, managers, skippers and fans across the football club. Full capacity grounds are back and there really is something special about a local derby in non-league. Before the game, I caught up with one of the directors at the club, Tristan Bannister, as he explained how financially the football club has been affected with no football being played. So my name's Tristan Bannister, I've been a director here at Biddeford, uh, Biddeford FC for about four or five years now. Um, started off with the supporters club, who are the guys you'll see uh, around the ground today that do all the basic the turnstiles, the running the bar and things like that. and then sort of invited onto the board to, to help out basically um, and it just sort of stemmed from there. Uh, finances of the club in actual fact because of the government grants and not playing football is quite profitable <laughs> which is weird you know but you just know as soon as you start the season again the costs are going to start to come in you know every, and the half time draw and you know games like today against our local rivals Barnstable you know this is the money we get now to help us through the season we've got a big 400 club draw as well that's about to start its second year and that's that's been a godsend you know because at the end of the day, our, our business side of things will go down because not so many businesses will be able to sponsor. They're not going to be in a position to, to do that. So we need to get the revenue from somewhere else. We've been lucky, obviously, with government grants and things to, to keep us ticking over. But it, it's, you know, when you do your cash flow forecast for the year, for the season, it's, you still need, that money's going to go. Whatever you've got in the pot now ain't going to last, last forever. For me, something that became so evident really quickly was the fascinating relationship between the fans and the club itself. You'd look one way and a fan would be chatting to the manager during the warm-up, then you'd be putting up all the flags in the stands. There was such an incredible fan-orientated atmosphere from the moment you head through the turnstile to the moment you leave at full time. So I headed over to the bar to chat to two fans to support their club home and away. They told me what it's like to be back for Derby Day after an absence of 18 months. I've been coming down since I was 15, so about 20 years. So, yeah. On and off for about 40 years, come down in, I was like 8, 9 years old. All coming to town club, really. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the heart of the town. It's a highlight of um, the weekend for me. Um, after a long, long week, it's just nice to be able to come and watch my local team home and away on a Saturday. Agree what he says totally, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like getting out and enjoying it, being with friends, watching the football we'll love like, you know? Both yeah, I love your away days. Um, yeah, the away days are the best for me. Um, and what's it been like without the football, the pandemic, what's it been like, you know, now with now you're back? Yeah, horrible, absolutely horrible. Like, yeah, I hated it. No, it's back, brilliant. Yeah, really good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I hated it. I hate I hated it during lockdown. It just wasn't the same. Um, Weekends just felt horrible, nothing to do, just stuck indoors all day. So yeah. just really glad that right. football's back now. Football's uh, life, mate. Football's life. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Life. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Biddeford manager Sean Joyce has been the manager here at the sports ground for 23 years. In his playing career, he made over 200 appearances in the Football League, playing for the likes of Doncaster Rovers, Exeter City and Torquay United. In November 1998, he went from the club captain to taking on a player-manager role. After picking up a knee injury, he was soon made the first team manager on a permanent basis. In his first year in charge, he steered Biddeford away from relegation and since then hasn't looked back. 
His side has been crowned champion six times and been promoted twice. Before kickoff, I was lucky enough to chat to the man himself. Yeah, like you said, I've been doing it since I was seven year old, so it's nice to come back. And had an 18 month off uh, when we missed it, so it's going to take a bit of time to get back into it and get used to it again. And you know, having 18 months off, it just stopped everything completely dead. So probably take us 10 games to get where we want to be, but enjoy it while we can. And what do you want to do? I know you've been here a long time as manager, but where do you see the football club going? I've spoken to the director of the club, but where do you, as the manager, want to see yourself in the football club in the next five, ten years? I just. Like you said, we never have a plan really. These clubs say they've got five year plans, it's nothing really. You've got, you've got a weekly plan, a monthly plan, especially like you said with the pandemic, what's happening. You, you, you can't plan too far. What we generally do is give lads a chance to play at this level, and you know, if they can progress, progress. If they can't, then they're staying with us. And you know, there's always a progression. Can we progress? Yeah, we can, but put the right back in. So, uh, you know, we're just going to make sure that we get we're set, ready to go. Um, big game for you today. Mm -hmm. How excited are you to, you know, are you played in the FA Cup? Played in the FA Cup. The big, biggest 3-1 that they deserve to beat us. Uh, we've had two good away performances, so we just want to perform us today. We let ourselves down the first game. Uh, we were disappointing with the result, but disappointing more or less with ourselves. You know, we, we're better than that, so hopefully we can be, be a good crowd here and we can perform and show that we have got a good young squad coming through. With both sides preparing to make their way onto the field, it's worth noting Biddeford will be playing in all red this afternoon, while their opposition and local rivals Barnstable are playing in their blue and yellow attire. With the referee playing the kickoff, today's North Devon derby is underway here at the sports ground. After a tough battle of the first 45, the referee blows up for half time with the game still being level at the break. As Biddeford's James Mayne was the closest to breaking the deadlock, it only makes sense to speak to the skipper himself as he told me what it's like to be back on the field after the pandemic and about the importance of getting their first three points of the league campaign. Yeah, no, it's great to be back. Um, obviously, you know, having all the fans back, especially with the local derbies, um, it's been great to, you know, have big crowds back in. Um, and also just for just for the lads really, you know, just having something to look forward to on a Saturday. Um, so we're all, you know, really enjoying back being playing. You know, we, we've had a, a, a tough start, a good start though, you know, to um, to tough away trips, uh, which we've got, you know, good points from. Um, disappointing in the in the FA Cup game against Barnstable, uh, but we're you know looking to put that right today. Um, it'd be great to score some goals and get three points on the board for our fans, definitely. After a sequence of fierce challenges, the derby begins to come to life. Unfortunately for Biddeford, it's all for the wrong reasons as there's number three and centre-half Toby Brown is seen a red card. But only five minutes later, Biddeford are given a corner. And in the 55th minute, Biddeford's number nine Craig Duff makes the most of Barnstable's sloppy defending and breaks the deadlock.
when that goal went in, of course, the first emotion was unbelievable celebration, happiness, excitement. And then I remember just taking a step back. I took a step back. I turned the camera lens towards the amazing crowd that were making unbelievable noise, an amazing party atmosphere, even prior to that goal, with the red card, with all the different circumstances and the scenarios that have happened already in this game of football. And just looking and just taking in the unbelievable atmosphere. With bid for beer clumsy on the ball, Bart's will break forward searching for an all-important equalising goal. It's only stopped as Biddeford's fullback brings him down just outside the penalty area, giving the Yellows a dangerous opportunity from a free kick. The referee continues to frustrate the home fans as he waves away what looks like a certain penalty when the Reds number 16 goes down in the box. With the referee blown for the final whistle, the game finishes 1-0 to Biddeford as they get their revenge over their local rivals who knocked them out of the FA Cup just under a week ago. And it's safe to say, the first three points of the season went down well with the home supporters. With Biddeford Football Club being an 8th tier side in the English Football Pyramid, I wanted to find out more about how a non-league club like the Robins received support during those financially troubling times in the heat of the pandemic. Um, certainly the FA have. Uh, FA grants, the Premier League grants, brilliant. You know, you, you can't, can't fault it. Um, slightly different for us here because we, we hire the pitch on a basically on a game by game basis so we're looking to get a long lease. So once we get a long lease that up, opens up other avenues for, uh, for funding. So, but we've still had all the, the general government grants, the football uh, league grants or the FA grants that, that's helped us out, yeah. And finally, I just want to ask about the long-term ambitions with the football club. Yep. Where do you want to go? Where do you see Biddeford in five, ten years time? What are the long-term ambitions? Good question, because that's what we're literally sitting down doing now. Um, you know, pre-pandemic, pre we'd be like, right, well, let's push on, let's get into uh, the Southern League Premier you know, and, and play the likes of Tauntons, Truros, Tiverton's if they're still there. You know, that that's where we were. We were in there a few years back and obviously dropped drop back again. Um, and that, that's where we want to be, you know. 
we know we're not suddenly going to take the world by storm and end up in the conference uh, or the national league in two or three years time but it's building from the youth upwards you know that again like I said saying earlier with the, the pool of players in North Devon is small so we want the, the youngsters that are here playing for the youth to build themselves up and progress to the first team and at the minute our, our men's teams are too far apart we've got in the North Devon League two teams now in the North Devon League but you know playing in the, the lower divisions so we need to get them, and that's the plan, five, ten years time, is get that in-between team where they can be playing and then step into the first yeah, team. Like the sustainability of the Yeah, yeah, exactly, and then not go off somewhere else, yeah, basically. Definitely. So that's that's it. But yeah, the pandemic has, has made us all refocus, you know, uh, and which is not a bad thing. You know, it's not a bad thing. We've been able to do improvements in the clubhouse and things. So, and then if we get the lease, we can improve out here as well, you know. So, so yeah, fingers crossed. You know, we, we take it day by day, but we're planning for, yeah, five, ten years. In 2004, Bidford got themselves into the FA Vars semi-final, where over two legs they played Winchester City for a chance to play at Wembley Stadium. Although they were defeated, it's still an important memory that's held in the highest regard within this incredible fan base. I think the highlight for me was getting the FA Vars semi-final. Was that back in 2002? Yeah. Um, 2004. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Two, yeah, getting the FA Vars semi-final in 2004 and having 2,000 people in the ground here to watch us was, I think, the highlight for me. That was me. a great day as well. Yeah, yeah. it was a great you day. You never know, can already move. Yeah. This truly has been an episode of the podcast that I'll never forget, meeting and having the pleasure to chat some incredible people surrounding such a fascinating football club. And without those individuals, this documentary really would not have been possible. So really, all I have left to say is a huge thank you to everybody who helped put this production together. From the directors, the coaching staff, the players, and of course the fans, you truly are the reason why this sport is so special. Between you and me Yes, it's true, I'm falling hard for you But I won't rush this love I can wait even if it's hard to take One moment is enough I will be standing here right by your side I will be standing here to the end of time Standing